Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico. And if you're new to this channel, we ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young, old, they think the old music is better, but I, I'm, I'm not so sure. And case in point, we're going to examine a, another album that just came out last month. And uh, yeah, and of course it was weird because Steve Albini passed away 10 days before the album came out. This is shellac. Uh, all, tra all these trains, all trains. I just forgot the name of the album. But anyway, here's a train station here on the album cover and i'm going to do two songs today i'm going to do wsod which sounds like a radio station but i think it stands for something else the lyrics are very minimal i just checked them moments ago and then i want to listen to how i wrote how i wrote elastic man cock and bull because that's obviously a nod to the band the fall and i'm a big the fall fan I love that song, How I Wrote Elastic Man. Now, this one doesn't, it's not a cover, and it doesn't quote any of the lyrics. So they just uh, made it up, and then they said the song used to be called Sauerkraut. So these lyrics seem kind of uh, just kind of made up on the spot. But we'll go ahead and do both of these. This will be about six and a half, seven minutes. If you like what I'm doing, a... Uh, senior reacting to the new music of the 21st century do hit that like or subscribe button so many of you don't but it makes a big difference and uh yeah let's get into it they're just a trio guitar bass and drum uh steve's doing the singing and of course he's got that trademark production style so uh, i don't know the wiki said this was more like blues rock but i expect it to be harder than that so let's check it out yeah, a little bit. into the next one.
again. I got a lot to say about this for just a trio. That drum production, I mean, the snare was just so dead, right? I mean, just the opposite of that 80s uh, drum sound, you know? It's, it's just it's just dead. It, it, there's, uh, it, it's, it's like being right there in a garage or something. But then he panned the drums more than he did any other instrument, I think. I mean, maybe I wasn't paying as much attention to the um, production on the bass and guitar, but yeah, I kept hearing the the drum shift in the, in the headphone spectrum, stereo spectrum. Yeah, really cool. And that dead sound. I mean, I I like it, you know, but it's so Steve Albini. It's so signature. Yeah, just just no reverberation on that kit at all but then the, the bass that was fat and had a lot of uh i don't know it seemed to take the place of the drums almost the two songs are different they reminded me of two different trios from the 80s and 90s the first song wsod that reminded me of the minute men now it had a whole different tone sound but it reminded me of the Minutemen and the um, muscularity. And I did read that word muscular on Wikipedia from All Music, just real quick scanning about the album. But I agree, that's a great word. Uh, the Minutemen were a, a, a very, if you're not familiar with them, they were their interplay was great, the, the, just the way that they fed off each other. And I really got that, that uh, feel. Uh, they also, of course, did very short songs, and this song was less than three minutes. They were called the Minutemen for a reason, because uh, Double Nickels on the Dime is 40 songs. Yeah, it's insane. Um, and I love the Minutemen. Now, Steve sings much more direct. He doesn't have that sarcastic tone that Dee Boone had. But the second song reminded me of Sugar which was Bob Mould's offshoot after Husker Du. Uh, it obviously didn't have the guitar pyrotechnics, but again, just uh, just that very versatile kind of uh, trio of great playing together. Yeah, I mean, you can tell Steve's not, uh, I wouldn't call him a virtuoso on the guitar in terms of speed or dexterity, but he, man, does he know how to harness a tone. And on that first song, right at the end, there was a really uh, kind of a harsh buzzing guitar sound that was just awesome. You know, right when that, right, and then that drum fill came in. When I talk about uh, the muscularity, by the way, you can't exactly 
predict when the drums are going to come in because they don't necessarily come in on the beat you think they're going to. So there is this uh, uh, free element, not, you know, the equivalent of free jazz where people come in where they want to come in. Uh, but yet everyone's talking to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the three people are playing three different things. They are definitely in sync with each other. So it's very cool. Um, it sounds, I don't know how rehearsed it is, but it's probably more deliberate than it sounds. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe they're just winging it. Maybe they're that good. I liked this better than the other Schlack songs uh, that we did uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, and I think it's because of the production. Uh, this had a a bit crisper production you know even though albini's considered a a master i'm not always a fan of steve albini's uh style i think it worked for pj harvey and it works for and it worked for nirvana and it works for certain bands uh that shellac song i liked it quite a bit that we did last year but it was this this just sounded better to my ears which song did i like better probably the first one WSOD but it's close um yeah this was this is better than I thought I mean I was looking forward to this because I liked shellac when we checked him out before but this exceeded my expectations I'm going to give this a uh, A rating uh, both both songs um even though I have a slight preference for the first one Love the guitar tones, love the drum production, love that fat bass, love the interplay. Uh, is there a weakness to shellac? If there is a weakness, it's just that Steve is a good singer, but not a great singer. You know, so I would say that's the weakness that holds them back, that keeps them from being uh, maybe an outstanding band, but musically, very interesting. Loved it. Yeah, I'm glad I checked him out. So rest in peace, Steve Albini. This wasn't morbid at all. This uh, was a fun listen. Yeah, you went out with a good album. It's great. So as we say here in Bonita, Mexico, buen dia. Let me know what you think. Take care.